Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how I get nice, tight joints with my segmented rings. Oh yeah, and we're also making a bowl blank. All right guys, starting off, we are going to be using Type on 3. I always use Type on 3 on all of my segmented projects because I don't know what people are going to use my bowls for. And since Type on 3 is waterproof, it gives me that little peace of mind just knowing that my glue joints aren't going to fall apart when people wash these bowls. One of the key things to remember when you're gluing up segments is it's always better to have more glue than less glue. Especially since this is end grain to end grain gluing, the pores of the wood are going to absorb a lot more of that glue before you even get these clamps on there. So don't be afraid to just glop this stuff on there. And speaking of clamps, this is the style of clamps that I love to use and always recommend it to people who are getting into segmented turning. These clamps to me are the key to a really good segmented ring glue up. These bad boys are called hose clamps. You can get them in a ton of different sizes and they're really easy to work with. I'm going to recommend the 6 inch rings because you can always pair them up and make them into bigger rings for whatever size rings you want to make. And I just have a ton of these things in the shop because once you get into segmented turning, these things come out clutch. So before you tighten these clamps all the way, I really like to make sure that they are flat. At least one side of this ring is flat. And that's what I'm checking for. I check all of the joints to make sure that there's no really big bumps or nothing is out of line. And sometimes your glue tacks up before you can get to that point. So I like to use a little eight ounce hammer to just hammer things home and make sure that it looks good. This is really gonna save you a lot of time when it comes to sanding the rings. Also, one thing I do while the glue is still wet is I just kind of rub it all into the wood. That way you don't have any bumps of glue or anything sticking out. So again, it'll make your sanding process easier. Wait time on these rings really is up to you. I've waited as short as 30 minutes and I've waited as long as a week or two to pull these things out of the clamps. It doesn't really matter how long they're in the clamps as long as you're sure the glue is dry. If you don't have a disc sanding attachment for your lathe, I highly recommend that you make one or buy one. I've used this method for years and it has given me really, really good results basically every time. The only time when it won't give you good results is because of user error. But man, were those joints clean. And now we have two flat sides on each ring, which means we're ready to glue this blank up. Well, almost, it needs a base. And I found that this perfect little piece of walnut that is just the right size, so this is what I'm going to use as my base. Yes, we could make a segmented base, but that's a lot more work and that also comes with other problems. A solid base like this does have problems, but I don't think it's as many as a segmented base. But I wanna be real honest with you guys, I actually cheated with this base. I cut this base out on the CNC and the reason I did that was because I wanted to test an idea I had. I wanted to carve a recess into the base of this for my chuck before I get it on the lathe. And what that's going to do for me is just allow me to turn the whole bowl without having to worry about reversing the bowl or flipping the bowl around and getting a recess in there. I'm pretty stoked on this idea even though I've never tried it before, but if you guys want to see me try it out, make sure that you subscribe so that you can stay up to date on my latest videos. So when I start gluing up my bowl blank, I start from the bottom and go up. I always glue on the first ring to the base and I try my hardest to make sure that that is as centered to the base as possible. 
you know, firm foundation, all that good jazz. But for real, making sure that your first ring is centered to your base is just going to make the turning process that much easier. Now remember when I said, the more glue the better. That still applies here and now when we're gluing our rings to the base. What I like to do is set my ring on the base with all of that glue on there and let it sit for maybe two to five minutes. Then I come back with my spring clamps and just use those to apply the pressure down that I need to make sure that that glue joint really settles. Once I feel like that glue joint has actually settled, I come in with some F-style clamps and really tighten this thing up to ensure that I get a really good glue squeeze out and connection between my joints. A way that you can know that you have a good glue up is that you have glue squeezing out from all around the ring. Again, wait for a sufficient amount of time for your glue to dry up and then you can glue on your next ring. If it's going to be your top ring, I always like to inspect my final ring just to see what might look best to be exposed on the top. If you've got figure in there or just whatever lines look cleanest, I always like to put that ring on the top because it's just going to make your piece look a lot better in the end. It's the little details of this that I really enjoy because you get to pick what people see when your bowl is finished. Now of course there are a ton of different ways to glue up your segmented rings and to glue up your bowl blanks. This is just the way that I do it. My general hope is the same in all of my videos. I hope that you guys can take pieces from my videos and apply them to your own style of turning. And I know that there is a lot to learn when it comes to segmented turning. I haven't been doing it for a terribly long time, but I feel like I've been doing it long enough to help answer some questions. So if you guys have questions about segmented turning, please leave me a comment down below. And that is how I get nice tight joints on my segmented bowls. This thing is ready for turning and I am very excited. I'm also a little bit nervous because I've never tried this before. I feel like I made it deep enough, but I'm not quite sure. This whole thing's an experiment. So in my next video, we are going to be turning this and, uh, and we're gonna see how it goes. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure you like and subscribe the video. Be good, be safe, be happy, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.